Brethren, brethren, pray the Lord. God our Father cares for us. He keeps looking for us. And he is in the business of drawing people to himself. And so let us pray as we continue with our episodes. Father God in heaven, thank you very much for this time. We pray that you bless us as we read through the Bible figures. And the Bible figures that um, have an impact on our lives so that we can walk a journey that leads us to you and so that we can have a close relationship with you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we thank God for this time again and we praise him because he keeps keeping us. He keeps encouraging us and he keeps leading us through. We've been talking about the biblical figure, the man called Moses, and the last time we shared, I gave you the meaning of the name Moses in Hebrew is Moshe, and Moshe means drawn out. And so this man who led physically, led the Israelites from the bondage that was in Egypt, and he led them through into, um, towards the promised land. And so we continue with him because we have lots of things that we learn from him as Christians, because this is the way to go as people of God, because the Bible is the word of God. And so we wound up the other episode by saying that God resists the proud, that God desires humility. And Moses was this humble man that God used to fulfill his ministry. And also learned that every situation in life, like for instance, in the life of Moses, every situation, everything was preparatory. And for us as Christians, as people of God, every situation remains preparatory because whether it is good, God is preparing you for something. Whether it's a bad situation, God is preparing you for something. Whether it's a challenging situation, God is preparing you for something. And so what you only need to do is to strategize yourself in whichever situation, knowing that God is preparing you. For Moses, everything was preparatory. And he became a leader of God's people for over those very many years. Because the journey, the Bible talks about 40 years in the wilderness. And so you can imagine someone leading people and, you know, a complaining people, you know, the people, the grudging people, but he remained focused on God and he led them. And so every situation is preparatory. So this time, I want to add that the one of the points that we find in Moses' life is that God is the one who fights our battles. And you know, you know, the entire life of Moses was battling, was struggling. God fights our battles. Remember when he was a young man in Egypt, he went about, you know, trying to liberate the Israelites, some, some Israelites, and there was trouble. He had to run away. And while he was in the wilderness still, God called him and sent him. And along the way, with the Pharaoh, it was a battle. He had to keep going before Pharaoh, 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 and he kept encouraging them himself. And God continued being on his side. But the message was, let my people go. Let my people go. And the reason why God sent plagues, those uh, uh, episodes of suffering, 10 of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, they were a battle uh, on the side of the Israelites until the Pharaoh had to release the people. So God is one who fights our battles. And the reason why after they had left in Exodus chapter 14, verse 1, I mean verse 1 following, and in verse 14 he says that the Lord told them that he will be the one to fight their battles. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. God fights our battles. In Moses' life, God fought the battles. Exodus 14, 14. And so I stand here to encourage you that God is the one that will continue fighting our battles as he fought for Moses. Remember, there were so many battles in the, you know, in the wilderness. He met the Amalekites. He was fighting all through, but God was with Moses everywhere that he went. Until such a time when he had a servant called Joshua and his other Caleb and other people. And they would fight and fight. And Moses could only, you know, could only sit somewhere and raising his hands up. And the people were fighting. God was on their side. And God led them all through for the 40 years. God was fighting for them. And in Exodus chapter 15, verses 3 and 6, the Bible says that the Lord is a warrior. That the Lord is majestic in power. And so when we read something like this, the God that fought for these people, 
the God that led them in the wilderness 40 years and fighting and struggling. And since the Lord is a Lord, the Lord of war, is the warrior, the Lord is a majestic in power, he still fights our battles. We are just but mere human beings. In our life, we have so many things. And so from Moses, we pick that God is still our fighter because we have battles of sickness, we have battles of poverty, we have battles, battles of psychological battles, emotional battles. But those who have positioned themselves before God, Moses remained a man focused on him, and God was fighting his battles. And in Isaiah chapter 42, verses 13, 14, the Bible says that he shall go forth like a mighty man. He shall go forth like a mighty man and prevail against the enemies. And this is evidenced in Moses' life. The Amalekites, those people, they were, you know, they were so uh, crude tribes. Of course, Akedomini was going through, but the reason God took them through a longer way. Some of them, he was actually trying to dodge them and actually continue on until they reached the promised land. Now, God goes forth like a mighty man and he prevails against his enemies. And I know that each one of us has a testimony to give in your own life and in my own life. And I also want to give in the Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 3, that he goes before you as a consuming fire. Indeed, God was leading them. And remember, the way God led the Israelites during the day, Moses was the physical leader, but God above all was their everything. During the day, he provided a cloud, a cloud to provide shade during the hot sun, and also giving them direction where to pass. Of course, it was not mountainous like you find other places that are mountainous and you can point the direction where you are going. But this is a desert. And so God would lead them during day. And so he went before them like a consuming fire. At night, it will not be a cloud, but it will be a pillar of fire. And remember that actually that one, at night fire can be seen. And it was providing warmth for them, but also providing light for them. And they continued moving. So their journey was day and night. And so that actually they could not rest, but all the time on the move. And I just imagine that actually even our life, our Christian walk is, must be a continuous one, whether during the day or at night. But knowing that our God goes before us as a consuming fire. You may be facing a challenge of some sort. The Israelites did face so many challenges. Moses could go back and forth with his assistants, Joshua, Caleb, and others, including his brother Aaron. But there were challenges everywhere. But Moses remained focused on this consuming fire, their God that kept leading them. And so, my friends, Moses' life remains, you know, a pillar for us. So that we can also remain focused and know that God is one of fights our battles. And he does that so that you and I can move on with our life. And one other thing that I want to mention as I wind up is having a personal relationship with God is paramount. Having a personal relationship with God is paramount. And for Moses, he established a close, intimate, and personal. And why we call it personal is must be between you and God. Because there are some people who go by groups. There are people, some, some people who go by multitudes. I want to tell you that because of multitudes, you know, the people, as they were moving, the Bible says that as they moved, only two people could be two or three that started the journey from Egypt into the promised land. Now, the people that started from Egypt into the promised land were two, Moses, I mean, Joshua, Joshua, and another one called Caleb. But Everyone that started from Egypt, all of them perished in the wilderness, including actually Moses, because actually he died on a mountain, Mount in the, in the plains of Moab, before they could even cross. But the whole point that I'm making here is establishing a personal, intimate, very close relationship with God. And this relationship is what will propel you to somewhere, will take you to higher heights. And I just want to encourage us that this personal relationship other people may not doing it, but mind your personal relationship with God. And for Moses, actually, the Bible does mention something very, very big in Exodus chapter 33, that actually so the Lord spoke to Moses face to face. And this is a, a desirous thing, that God speaks to you, speaks to me. Exodus chapter 33, verse 11 and following, following, face to face, verse 18, face to face. So as a man could speak to a friend, now Moses made God 
his friend. He had his weaknesses. He had his challenges. But this is something that I desire that we, even in our generation, even now, we need to find God as our close friend. And the Bible says, but since then, there has never been a prophet like Moses in Israel, whom the Lord knew face to face. You know, this fellowship here, you know, this intimate personal relationship here is the one that can lead us and move us on. And the reason why we are, we are continuing with this man, Moses, is actually so that we can also cultivate our relationship closer, our relationship personal. You can be a family man, but lead by example. You see, Moses was also a family man. He was a father, he was a husband, and he did. The reason why his father-in-law came into picture by giving him advice here and there. And so he formed a good relationship with God above all and the people of his family, including his father-in-law. And so this is something that actually we pick, that actually his father-in-law comes into picture and advises him, yet young man, have people that can help you. And so I just want to encourage you that actually we establish a very working, nice relationship with the people of your family, including your in-laws. If you are the father, if you're a husband, if you're a man, establish a, a nice, a, a working relationship with the people of your wife's side. If your wife, establish a, a working, nice relationship with the people on your husband's side. And so that actually you move together. And Moses' father-in-law gave very important information about advising him how to go about life's business. So friends, I finish with this about the man Moses. One, God is in the business of drawing people to himself. And Moses, Moshe, means God draws people, that he was drawn from the water. And God is in the business of drawing people to himself. And so I want to ask you to remain focused on God's will. God's will is perfect, is pleasing, and it's good. We read that in Exodus, I mean, in Romans 12, Romans 12, verse, uh, verse 2. God's will is good, is perfect, and it is pleasing. So remain in God's will. Just do that and God will be upon you. Number two, God uses weak people. Weak. You know, Moses was poor in speech, but God is the strength of the weak over in, in, over in our weaknesses. And Paul says, I mean, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, that my grace is sufficient, that when I'm weak, then I'm strong. So remain uh, focused there. God uses weak people. Moses was a weak man. And remember how he was picked. David, how about, how about the fishermen that Jesus picked? Fishermen, fishermen, you know, on the lake, and then you get the people and others. And then uh, look at David. I've already mentioned David, but look at him. He was the last, the last one in the family and even forgotten. But God goes looking, for, God uses wicked people. How about Gideon? Gideon, read about Gideon. He's, he said his clan is the smallest, is the weakest, but God lifted him up. So I pray that God lifts you up in your weakness, that he puts you at some level. And then number, number next is Moses was focused, Moses was loyal, Moses was faithful to God. And so 40 years of struggle, but remained focused. 40 years of travailing, but remained uh, focused. He goes here, he fights here, he quarrels here, he shouts here, but he offered so many speeches encouraging the people, talking to them, remain focused, and Moses was. So, discover the true strength. That's the final thing that I'm telling you, and I'm sharing it with my heart. Discover the true strength. Rely on God. God's grace is sufficient for us. So Moses leaves us with this very, very important picture, and God fights our battles, and God, I mean, God uses anybody as long as we align ourselves to with God's will. And may God, who brought Moses into picture from nowhere, and he made him somebody somewhere as a prince in Egypt, and then eventually the leader of God's people, may he lead you, may he guide you, may he protect you, may he uplift you, and so that you'll be a man or woman that will make a difference in your society, in your family, that he can make me a man in his church that can bring reformation, transformation in his church. And you too, may God lead you. May God provide. May God show you the way to go. Moses was, I am, you can be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and we say, Amen.